Good morning. And thanks for being with us this morning. Uh, if you're a guest, a, a member, just grateful to have you here. It's Christmas week, and so please acknowledge the services that we have provided, um, the 4 o'clock, the 7 o'clock on Christmas Eve, the 9 a.m. on Christmas Day, the 9 a.m. on the Sunday after Christmas, a lot of opportunities. So we just thank you. Thank you uh, all for the cantata last week. Again, that was uh, people are still dribbling in with their praise about that as, as the week went on. So thank you, Pam, for all the hard work with that. Our pleasure. Yeah. Um, I don't think there's any other announcements other than just thank you for being here. And may God bless you today with the Prince of Peace. We're going to talk about the Prince of Peace today. So with that, let us rise and we'll begin our worship. Pastor? We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The mighty Lord has done great things, and holy is his name. We thank you, O Lord. The Lord's mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. We adore you, O Lord. The Lord has shown the strength of his arm. We praise you, O Lord. The Lord has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. We worship you, O Lord. We light the candles. No pressure. Let us pray. O Lord, let the lighting of these candles signify that you are the light that shines in all the darkness of our lives. As we wait, watch, hope, pray, guide us all to reflect your light and let it shine through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We continue singing.
having emerged from the waters of baptism as God's new creation in Christ, we confess our sins to God and one another. Pray silently to the Lord. We confess to you, O Lord, that we are captive to sin in thought, word, and deed. We have not always been instruments of your peace. Our homes have been, at times, places of strife and turmoil by our own fault. Even in the church, sometimes we have chosen to fight rather than to make peace. Remember your mercy, O Lord, and your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Forgive us, Lord, for times when love was lost. And moments when we never thought to care. For times when we destroy and subdue. The word that brings your people close to you. Forgive, forgive, forgive us all our sins. And help us love so newness can begin. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come and help us by your might, that, that the sins which weigh us down may be quickly lifted by your grace and mercy. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. Good morning. The Old Testament reading comes from the fifth chapter of Micah, verses 2 through 5a, 1 through 7b. But you, O Bethlehem Ephrathah, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose origin is in from of old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has given birth. Then the rest of his brothers shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall dwell secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be their peace. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading is from the 10th chapter of Hebrews, verses 5 through 10. When Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifices and offerings you have not desired, but a body have you prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sin offerings, you have taken no pleasure. Then I said, Behold, I have come to do your will, O God, as it is written of me in the scroll of the book. When he said above, You have neither desired nor taken pleasure in sacrifices and offerings and burnt offerings and sin offerings. These are offered according to the law. Then he added, Behold, I have come to do your will. He abolishes the first in order to establish the second. And by that, we will have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son. And they shall call his name Emmanuel. Alleluia, alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, Mary arose and went with haste into the hill country to a town in Judah. And she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the baby leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And she exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why is this granted to me? that the mother of my Lord should come to me. For behold, when the sound of your greeting came to my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. 
And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Good morning. Oh, I love your outfit. All right. So we are one less than a week away. Five more days. <laughs> What's going to happen in five days? What? Christmas. Okay. So are you all ready for Christmas? Yeah. Yeah? You got your tree up? Yeah. Decorated? Okay, so, hey, have you been getting Christmas cards in the mail? <laughs> I know, I got a couple, not very many. You know, and I went looking because I wanted to send some out this year. And I had a hard time finding because I wanted a special one. So, like, I could find lots of cards like this that had Christmas trees on them and presents. And some say Merry Christmas, some say Happy Holidays. Ugh. I don't like those ones. Um, but I wanted something special, so I decided I was going to make my own. So this is my card. Isn't it pretty? It has a little town on there. Look at that town. What do you notice about that town? It's not very big, is it? It's not big like the city we live in. We live in a huge city, don't we? Yeah. I live in a very bigger one. You live in a bigger one? Okay, and then look. What's this over here? You see all these hills around there? What do you see? Yeah. A little sheep. Yeah. A little sheep in that town. And then, wow, I see a really big star up in the sky. What town do you think this is? Bethlehem. Bethlehem. You're right. It's Bethlehem. Bethlehem's kind of a little, small, nothing special town, huh? But something really big happened there, didn't it? Yeah. What happened there? I don't know. Look behind you. <laughs> what do you think happened in Bethlehem? The baby Jesus. Yeah, baby Jesus was born there. That was big, wasn't it? And baby Jesus, he came as a little baby, this, this king of all kings. He just came as a little tiny baby. Not a big, huge king wearing a crown and big robe, huh? Like the other king that was ruling at the time. He lived in a big city, Jerusalem. <coughs> it's a huge city. And he lived in a big castle. And he wasn't a very big king because he couldn't do the things that our king could do. Our king, even though he became very little in a little tiny town, and, baby. and as a little tiny baby, he could do big things, the biggest things of all. He could, he could protect us. He could love us. He takes care of us. And guess what? He did some really big things. He took away all of our sin. And my joy. And he guarantees that we will live in heaven. Those are things that, that regular kings can't do. <coughs> Only our King Jesus can do things like that. You know what's really cool about this little town and this little baby? It reminds me that even though we're little, we can do big things. God can use us to do big things too. Yes. He can use us to share his love. He can use us to tell others about Jesus and how Jesus guides us and protects us and loves us. So it's kind of cool that even though we're little, we can do big things, huh? Yeah. All right, let's pray. I'm going to give you that little town of Bethlehem. Let's pray. Dear Father, thank you for loving us in such a big way that you sent the little baby Jesus born in a little town to do the biggest things of all and save us. Help us to share that love with everyone we know. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. It's so close to Christmas, and there's so many things to still cover, and there's so much to talk about. Today we're going to talk about peace, and not just any kind of peace, but the kind of peace only God can give and only God gives. Here's the text. But you, O Bethlehem, Ephratah, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me, one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose coming forth is from of old, from ancient days, and he, he shall be their peace. Wow. All that prophecy condensed into one pronoun, he. We know who the he is. These words were written, by the way, 700 years, 700 years before Jesus. Let that set in. 700 years. Now, Jesus was born in David's hometown, and that's not by accident. Nothing in the Bible is by accident. I tell people the Bible's not history. Now, get that out of your head. The Bible's theologized history. It's history told for a specific purpose, helping us to see Jesus as the fulfillment of everything. It's history, but it's, the, it's, it's for a purpose. And so all the people that you find there are part of that as well. I'm kind of a superhero fan, you know. I, I like comic books. And I noticed one thing the Marvel Universe is doing right now. They have these movies, and then they have a TV show, and they're even finding ways to integrate the TV show with the movies. It's not by accident. They're, they did a lot of planning to get to that stage. I bring that up to show you that God's plan is even more remarkable. I mean, he was putting his plan in the people like you and me. He was putting his plan in situations that looked like game over. Foreign powers in play. You know, tyrannical powers at that. And God allowed his, his message, this beautiful gift of Jesus to be just go through all the history and finally be the fulfillment to come. And then he picks Bethlehem. Why not? Oh, why not? I mean, Bethlehem's this little podunk town. It's just, it's a little stopping point along the way. You're lucky if you can get a meal there, probably. It's just that kind of place. Sure, it has some history, but that history, those people are dead. Now it's just a city, a little town. But it's full, quite full when Jesus comes, isn't it? Because there's a, there's, the people have to get back to their hometowns, and there's a, a census and all this stuff, and it's a big deal. But the Son of God has no place to be. He's in a manger. The first people to come and see him, I oh, figures, they're shepherds. Like shepherds were the refuse of the world. They were around dirty animals, so they weren't even allowed in the town. And why wouldn't God, you know, the creator of the universe, the prince of peace, the one who's awesome, it just seems like his whole, th way of, hold on, if you go back to the Old Testament, this is just the way God loves to work, isn't it? He loves to work through like Abraham, the 75-year-old doddering old fool with his wife who's past menopause and says, I'm going to make of you a great nation. Really? Or he takes a, a, a young lad who's thrown into a well and he does great things through him, so great that it allows the people of Israel to come and live in Egypt. I'm talking about Joseph. I mean, but Joseph is not just a story that's kind of cool. It's not just the longest story in the book of Genesis. It's more than that. It's kind of a metaphor, kind of a symbol toward a bigger story to come, a story like Joseph in a lot of ways, but different in so many ways. And that story is about Jesus. And you'll find that every time you read a Bible story, if you're a preacher especially, that you're, you're, never, you're never without limits. There's so much there that God put in place to get us where we're at. Bethlehem. You know, we live in the beautiful United States of America, greatest country on earth. We've told ourselves that over and over again. It was funny. I lived in Canada for 15 years. They don't view us the same way we view ourselves. Kind of interesting. But, um, but it, what's interesting is our country is a country that's notorious and known throughout the world of helping establish peace, unless you're on the wrong end of our peace. Okay. Because our peace leaves a lot of stuff behind, like widows, widowers, orphans, um, collateral damage. I mean, the, the payoff's better, you know, the people are in a better situation, but to get there, it's messy business, peace cost. Anybody who's been in the armed forces, you know that. That's kind of what you live with, the knowledge that peace, true peace cost, okay? Um, 
The United States has done a lot of wonderful things to the world in trying to establish peace, but there have been some times where people have gotten in the way that we're not supposed to be there and some bad things have happened. Okay? I'm not going to say it didn't happen. That's what happens. But see, the United States has an idea of peace, that peace comes through a show of strength, and peace comes through economic prosperity and allowing that to kind of push other nations to where they need to be or whatever. And, and so even though there's a lot of issues involved with that, a lot of collateral damage, it's still, our country is still doing better at it than most every country in the world. Okay? It's not perfect, though. And, you know, we're, 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 we're doing some damage out there at times and doing a lot of good at times, but it's not consistent, and it's not something that you, sometimes we want to point to it in, in pride. Sometimes there's some moments in our history that have been shameful. That's just the way it is. But I want you to think of this. We lost about 600 to 800,000 people in World War II, okay? Or no, yeah, in the Civil War, we lost about, was it 400,000 or so? Or something like that, 600,000? In Vietnam, we lost about 60,000. In Korea, about 16,000. And that's awful. I'm a military kid, that's scary stuff. I mean, we lived in my house <coughs> always thinking dad might go to work and not come home that day. We especially knew that when he was working with CENTCOM. He wore fatigues every day, knowing that he could be on a jet to the Middle East in no time at all, and we might not see him for two months. It was always part of who we were. It's just... But I want to tell you something that we've done within our country that shows a real lack of peace to many people outside the world. And, I, and when you talk about this, you've got to be careful, okay? Because I'm not want to point this sin out as bigger than any other sin. This sin's completely forgiven if you've been part of it. But with the numbers I gave you earlier, we have killed 62 million babies before they even saw the light of day in this country. Now, I know that people have abortions for all sorts of reasons. I'm not ignorant to that. I know there are situations where people have been in school and somebody got pregnant and it was like a game stopper and it was game, and I know that. I know some have had where the relationship wasn't great and to have a child in the world seemed all. I know there's, oh, believe me. Usually I get the call way after the fact when I'm helping to pick up the pieces of the person who made that choice. It's never pretty. You know, and say what you will. Try to beautify it or clinic, you know, make it clinical as you want. The fact is, it, it, we're talking 62 million. That my tax dollars, your tax dollars, a lot of things paid for. Is there forgiveness? Of course there's forgiveness. But is that the third way? Oh, we're just not going to talk about things like that? Because, oh, it might hurt somebody's feelings? Yeah. That seems to be the way the church has handled a lot of things. And that's because the church doesn't want to ruffle feathers. We want people to feel like Jesus is still important, even in the midst of recognizing that. Jesus forgives, folks. But what, the way Jesus forgives is the way he operates. This shouldn't surprise you. Now, the reason I have the Star Trek insignia there is because, you know, <coughs> we put our might in the great USA with its show of force or its, its, uh, its prosperity, and those are ways to maneuver the world, but it didn't work with China so much. We thought if we just opened up the world, to, you know, if China just saw what we had, that they would change their communist regime and they would just come and, hey, we're all capitalists together. Uh, it didn't happen that way. It just gave a lot of people in the leadership more money and, uh, and, and we got a continuation. So even our best attempts, they're not that great. We're doing what we can. We're creating peace, a little, a little environment, but it's not lasting peace. It's always, it's always like, like on, the, on the edge, even now, you know? We hear all sorts of stories about hypersonic missiles and things. We don't know what peace is like. We're so used to being protected by two major oceans that we don't even think, but you know what? There are missiles out there that can reach us before we're even aware that they're coming. And if those things have nuclear war, I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just saying this is the world we live in, where we think we have peace. It ain't a lasting peace. And sometimes, Star Trek, the reason I have that up there is because Star Trek is a, is a cool universe, but it's a universe that has found a way to dismiss God. I'm a huge Trekkie. I've watched them all. Love them all. I, I, I even love Star Trek Voyager. I mean, I just love them all. Okay? 
And, and the thing is, is that, that some of the greatest decisions we've ever made as human beings have hurt so many people in the process. You know, I hear people pushing socialism or communism and it's becoming avant-garde or, or bourgeois or bougie as they say, but bourgeois, it's becoming something like that. You know, oh, this is, it's never worked. <laughs> it's killed a lot of people in the last century. Or don't you know the history of what Mao did and, and others where he starved the whole country and, and they lost millions of people because of that. All the, the experiment to have everybody have equity. I'm all for equality. God's all for equality. But God doesn't even play the equity game. Don't you remember the story of the talents? He gives one five, one two, one one. He doesn't even start them out of the same, same starting you know, thing. <laughs> Jesus comes in the midst of our might and our power and our intellect, and he does something simple. So simple through a little baby. So profound. I love this modern day. This is a professor, in, in, uh, he's in New Hampshire, and he just wrote this last year. Here's our situation as I see it. We are called to bring the love of God to what has largely ceased to be a human culture. We preach not to the old idolaters who were seeking God but got him wrong. We preach instead to people who have sunk beneath idolatry, who have strangled liberty with liberty. Think how people are using laws today to punish people. Liberty with liberty. Okay? Think of how big tech is shutting down everything and all that kind of stuff. Acknowledging no laws but those they make themselves. Think of what people are saying. My body, my choice. I can do whatever I want. You can't tell me what to do. I'm not hurting anybody. I can do what I want. It's the age we live in who have, as Solzhenitsyn's uh, peasants said, forgotten God and who have, as a consequence, forgotten man. The Prince of Peace is on his way. Let me tell you about God's peace. Peace is not in the Bible just the absence of hostility and difficulty. Peace in the Bible is, is tied in with shalom, those three continents that make that up, the S, the L, and the M. And in those consonants, you find completeness and wholeness. And so what peace is with God is when you're born, you have a whole. Augustine caught on to this. He said, our hearts do not find rest until they rest in thee. We're born with a kind of hole, a God hole. And our life, a lot of our life is spent shoving other things into that hole that are not supposed to be there. And, and God comes and reveals to us what should really be, and that means there's going to have to be some surgery to take that out. Some of it's so intertwined with our being that you, we think it, if we take that out, we're going to die. But God says, watch what I can do. And he rips that stuff out of us and he places himself there and that's where peace comes in. All of a sudden, you start seeing the world differently. Instead of seeing the immediate or the quantifiable, you start to see Bethlehem. You start to see, oh yeah, God likes to work through small things like an insignificant virgin who's with child, who, who, who did not have room for in the end, so she's out in a manger. And who are the first witnesses? Oh, lo and behold, this should not surprise us. They're shepherds, the scoundrel of the earth. They're all around those dirty animals. Why should that, you know, that's just the way God works. And it's just the way God works. And the reason I tell you this is because we live in an awesome world and there are awesome things around us. And this season is filled with a lot of awesomeness, some of which we get all sentimental about. We want to see this, oh, they used to have such different lights last year or they were so much better. And we make some things about all the glitz and the glimmer and, and the fact is, is what really is the Prince of Peace is this baby. And you take that wood and you start taking it apart and you can fashion it into a cross and it's this servant to us. The peace of God comes not through power, not through strength like the world expects. The peace of God comes through humility, sacrifice, giving up oneself. Jesus brought peace not by pushing against the forces, but instead allowing those forces to overcome him, even unto death. And then Jesus rose again from the dead. And now how is that peaceful, Pastor? Well, I go through my day knowing I'm forgiven. I've got sins of my past. Folks, I'm a preacher's kid, okay? Let's be peace together, plus... My dad was a Navy man, so he was away a lot. So preacher's kid, Navy brat. You think I don't have some crazy stories? 
But even more than my crazy stories, I've got forgiveness. And it's so wonderful that I go to bed, even in my worst of my sins, I've got it. And you know what's cool about that forgiveness? It doesn't just relax with me. It creates something inside of me which doesn't allow me to hold on to the sins of those around me. I start to recognize that that same grace that's come to me is what I'm supposed to be displaying to the world around me. Not because I'm supposed to even, it's because it just comes natural. It's wonderful. It's a joy. And I, then I realize that I'm saved. Not because I've got to strive for it. How, what, when am I done striving anyway? Or did I hit the right steps along the way? Or am I going up a different... Where am, what? No. I'm saved by grace because Jesus came. He came. He did everything well, so well, that then he was the one who was able to take my punishment and your punishment. He took it all on the cross. And in, in the place of our damnation, he turned it around and gave us salvation. And therefore, my sins are forgiven. I'm able to forgive other people's sins. And I have this gift of salvation. And oh, there's one more great thing. The gift of the Holy Spirit. The one who helps connect all these things together in my being so that nothing is lost. Your salvation is guaranteed and assured because of the one man who came to this world, born of the Virgin Mary, born in Bethlehem, surrounded by losers and fishermen and, and tax collectors <coughs> and other people, who died alone on a cross between two thieves, who was raised from the grave, not in some grandiose fashion for all to see, but for a few to see, and 500 after that. And it's that story, almost an insignificant story, if you were to turn your head one direction, it's that story that brings peace to the whole world. That's the power of God. That's what we are to be about. To not get caught up in numbers. Oh, we'll get joyous about numbers. Did you see how many people came on Christmas Eve? Ah, uh, you know. No. What can we do for him? Because he's done everything for us. How can we return the favor? And he says, here's how you return it. Love, forgive, and live out your salvation around the people you have. And watch what I can do through each one of you. I can do great things. Just like I did in a little town called Bethlehem. In Jesus' name, amen. Grace, Holy Father, we thank you. We thank you and we praise you for Jesus. We thank you for giving us a season to indeed celebrate. Lord, the way we've tried to handle bringing peace into this world, even our own individual selves, has failed miserably over and over in so many different ways. And yet the one way to bring peace, and we know it to be true, is your kingdom. Thank you, Lord, that in the midst of all the other kingdoms of this world, your kingdom is more powerful and your kingdom cannot be destroyed. Thank you, Lord, for giving us eyes to see your kingdom. Now, Lord, with the eyes that we have, with the hands that we have, with the mouths that we have, with the feet that we have, help us to share the goodness of Jesus with everyone around us, whether it's Christmas or not. In your name we pray, amen. Let us rise and let us join together in the creed of our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. At this time, you may be seated as we receive God's tithes and offerings for his kingdom's work. And um, if you have any prayer concerns, there's these little blue cards in the back, and you can find them. You can fill that out. If you can't get in the worship service, please get it to an usher, and they'll get it to us, and we'll keep you in our prayers this week. <laughs> and if you, ever, if you ever have a fulfillment to the prayer that you sent in, here's another thing. Give us a call as well. We'd like to hear how that prayer was answered. Sometimes, you know, we, we don't hear all that stuff. So, okay, with that.
It is prayer time at Epiphany, and we have prayers for, first of all, the flowers. The flowers were given by Tom and Patricia Ahn in honor of their family, and then Jim and Ann Gradwall. First of all, to celebrate their son Kevin's birthday and also Ann's retirement from the IRS after 35 years. God bless you. Where are you? Uh, yeah, there you are, yes. God bless you. <coughs> Mark Hunt and family have returned from Buffalo, New York. God bless you. They were there for his mother's funeral, and she has received eternal life in Christ, and, given, and the Lord has given them all peace in, in, um, in, the, in our Lord Jesus. Mark Hempel is still in North Cyprus Hospital. He had serious abdominal surgery, and he's hoping to start eating regular food. So prayers for healing and for the food and for the grace of Jesus. Keith Chapman continues with his therapies and is making progress. Jackie Bungie is still in MD Anderson, making progress with her infection, continues to receive chemotherapy. And then Lisa Scalf, who is Lucille Campbell's daughter, she, um, she had uh, all kinds of issues with her heart, but that's been clearing up. She's got a defibrillator vest on. So we're praying for her to gain healing for her heart and strength in her body. And then one prayer request from the first service for Bill Demko's wife, Patty. She's having cataract surgery on Thursday at the Baylor College of Medicine. So God bless her with the healing of Jesus. Please stand as we go to the Lord in prayer. As we prepare our hearts and minds for Christ's coming, we turn to the Lord in prayer. We pray silently to the Lord. O wisdom from on high, grant us peace. Move the leaders, pastors, teachers, and all the people of our synod to be peacemakers, we pray. Hear us, coming Lord. Desire of nations, bless the leaders of the nations, our president and Congress, our governors and local leaders. Move all leaders to cease envy and boastfulness and justice and corruption. Guide our leaders to be honorable people who do not neglect the poor and who strive toward the flourishing of all human beings. Bless those who serve in our armed forces and lift up refugees and all victims of war. Bring peace between us and our enemies and let your peace reign over this broken world. We pray, hear us, hear us coming, coming Lord. Lord. O day spring from on high, come to the aid of all who are in need as you humbly enter this world as a vulnerable baby, help us, all of us, humbly to enter the lives of those who are sick, facing surgery or dying, to offer comfort and hope. We now lift up especially all those whom we just mentioned and all whom we want to give to you now from our hearts. Bring healing according to your will and peace to those who are suffering Thank you for the work of doctors, nurses, and, others, and other medical professionals who work toward healing and restoration of wholeness. Guide scientists searching for cures for diseases that bring suffering to the world, that their work might lead to the healing for many, we pray. Hear, Hear us, coming Lord. Lord. O Key of David, let your peace flow freely in and among the families of this congregation. Empower parents and grandparents to love their children and children to love their parents. Watch over all who travel and comfort, your, and comfort families who are separated by many miles. Guide families to be places where your love is demonstrated to strangers as well as to friends. We pray, hear, hear us, us, coming Lord. Lord. O Lord of might, let the peace that surpasses human understanding, the peace that comes from being in Christ, so fill our hearts that we become signs of your peace in this chaotic world. We pray, hear us, coming, coming Lord. Lord. O Emmanuel, you deliver your people even from the grip of death. Comfort those who mourn and use us to express the hope that comes from trusting in you. Bring us to be with them on that great day to come. And until that day, give us grace to endure life's difficulties while also abiding in your love. We pray, hear, hear us, us, coming, coming Lord. Lord. You, O Lord, know the thoughts of our hearts and hear those prayers that come to you in sighs too deep for words. 
All our prayer we entrust to you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord has helped to serve in Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and to his offspring forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.